Okay, so this last uh, couple of lessons, really, we're just going to have a look at something called Python. Now, Python you may associate as being a snake, but it is also a programming language. Now, it's not named after a snake as such, but you may see logos with a snake in it. The programming language is invented by a Dutch guy. Um, he used to work for Google, I believe, at one point, and he 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 developed this programming language and he was a big fan of a comedy, a British comedy show called Monty Python. So that's where it comes from. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to just run this program, um, this programming language in something called uh, repl.it. Okay, so if you just type in repl on your browser in say Google Chrome, for example, um, you get this will be the first hit. Now, what this is, it's an online, as you can see, IDE editor, compiler, interpreter. And what IDE stands for is Integrated Development Environment. Now, that is basically a program that lets you program. Okay, sounds a little bit weird, but that's how it is. Okay, now when you click on it, it'll come up uh, with this. Now, of course, you can sign up and you can probably use your school Google account possibly for that, but we don't actually need to sign up or do any of that really. And it just shows you what it looks like and the kind of things that we can do. You know, it has some information down here and you can see all the different features, right, of this. But what we can do is just press on either here, start coding, or up on the top right, start coding. You don't even need to log in. Now, here we've got a whole host of programming languages, and you might be like, wow, these are all programming languages that you can use. Yes, they are, right? So they're all different ones here um, that are available. Um, some of them are different aspects, like this thing is part of Python, right? So and you've got Pygame and different things like this. So these are all different features that we can actually look up. But you can just click on the very first one, which would be Python. And then you just press Create. Okay, so when you press Create here, you can see on the window that we get, um, we've got a file here that says main.py. So this is our main file, right? And of course you can add files, you can add a folder and different things like this, but some of these features might only be available if you are signed in or to be able to use them and download them and all sorts. So here you've got um, different things like talking about packages here, a debugger and your settings. Okay, so under settings, you can see you can change your layout, you can change the theme from light to dark. If you want to do that, that's up to you. Uh, the font size you can change. The indenting, I probably wouldn't change any of this really all that much. Um, I might put the theme just into dark there, it looks nice. Right. Okay, so on this little window here, this is where we write our programming code. And on the right here, this is what we call a shell, which is the Python shell. So this is where our code gets outputted. So when we do a text-based program, all the stuff will come out in here. So you can see what version of Python that this IDE, this online version, is using. It's using Python 3.8.2, which is pretty much the latest version, right? So you can see it says February 26, 2020. So what we do is we just click in here and we start writing. So the very first program that you can write today is this one. So we do print and then in quotes, you can put hello world, like that, okay? So that's it, print, open brackets, quotes, Low world. Okay, then you press run and it's outputted this. Okay, so this is usually, this is very typical of the very first program that people write in any language, right? So it is this the hello world program. Very, very common, very famous. Everybody, if you ask anybody that's done any programming, they will know 
what that is, right? They will know the Hello World program. They'll be like, yeah, I did that, okay? So what? let's go through what we just did here. We basically used this thing, which is a function, right? Now this function, if you imagine we did spreadsheets not that long ago, and spreadsheets, you had things like counts. You did equals count, open and close brackets. You did count A, you did if. Uh, you did sum if, you did VLOOKUP, and all of those kind of things too, right? So in the same way that you did those in spreadsheets, we've got something very similar that we can do here in programming, and that is using these functions as well. So these are built. this is a built-in function just for doing that, okay? So we got its print, and what print does, it doesn't print using a printer, as you can imagine. It basically printed this text onto the screen, so outputted it onto the screen. So this is the use for output, okay? So let's um, do some other lines of code. We will look at today input, and we'll also look at output. Now, we can then um, start doing things like creating something called a variable. And if you remember from doing scratch programming, we used variables to store things like the time, or maybe the score, or maybe the amount of lives that you had in your game, right? So that's very common that you need to do something like that. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask somebody what their name is and store it in a variable called name, okay? So I'm gonna write that, which is name and put an equal sign, okay? So here you can see name, this is what's called an identifier. An identifier is basically uh, the, the spelling or the, you know, the, name, uh, the, the name of the variable, okay? And in here, you can put your name. So I'm just gonna put my name. Okay, so I'll put Paul. And you can see I've done it in quotes. Right, double quotes I've used on each end. You can use double quotes or you can use single quotes. So you can use both of them. So you can do this, like that, or as I say, the double quotes. Now notice if I don't do the double quotes, it ends up turning white like this. Okay, so it's important that you can see that when we're doing something that we want to be text, needs to be in either single quotes at the beginning and the end or double quotes at the beginning and the end. So this is called a string. So this variable that we've called name has got a type of data in it and that type of data is a string. So what we usually would should do here is actually just do space space and then find the hash symbol. Sorry, space space and then the hash symbol. And this hash symbol is used to write a comment. So I'm just gonna say string, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm just basically saying what data type this variable is called name. Okay, so we've got this which is stored in name now. And instead of um, printing just hello world, we can then print and put the name after here. So I can do a comma and then write name. So whatever the name happens to be, in this case it happens to be Paul, I'm just gonna say hello and then the name, right? So run this and you can see it says hello Paul, okay? So that's dead simple. We've stored this bit of text in a variable, so think of this variable a little bit like a box. You've just put some text, which is a string, right? So a string of letters. Just put the string of letters in that box called name. And then we're using this function to print out the word hello and what's in the box, right? So whatever is in the box, and you can see it's just done that, right? So like that. Now, we can add to this a little bit further, as I could say, we could actually ask somebody for their name instead. 
So instead of doing, actually it's a storing uh, a, a static name, somebody's specific name, we could ask, depending on who the user is, right? So in this case, what we could do is use a function in here instead, and that function would be input. Now, I can leave the input just like this, um, but you can see that I actually do have options. Whenever I open this brackets, you can see read a string from standard input, and we would have options that we could put into this. But I'm just going to leave the brackets like that for the moment. If I run this, see so what happens, right? So it's stopped. You can see it says it's stopped here and it's waiting for something. So if I type in, let's say I type in a different name, Bob, and press enter. So I'm writing this in over here. And then I press enter and it said, hello, Bob. Okay. So this input actually took keyboard input. But when you run the program, you can see it just shows you nothing. There's no message telling me to type anything. I needed to figure that out. I needed to know that. So instead of that, what we can do is put what's called a prompt inside, just like where we use this print uh, function here. And we put something inside, a couple of arguments. Here we can put what's called uh, a prompt. So we can do it in our quotes again. And then we can just say, what is your name? And put a question mark. If I leave a little space maybe, just there. Right, so run this now. Okay, so what is your name? I type in there, Paul. And it says, hello, Paul. Right, so nice and easy, nice and easy. As you can see that we've then stored the name that the user is written inside of name. So whatever input we receive, so if I run this again, and you can imagine I just type in even numbers and letters and whatever, and press enter, it's gonna say hello, and then whatever the person's written, right? So it's gonna just do that, whatever, okay? Now, of course, we could program it to not recognize these numbers and say, that's not your name, your name can't have numbers in it. You can do those kind of things, but we need to actually um, add a lot of more information into here to program that. So what we can now do is from this point, we can just gather some information from the user. So if we run this and you can imagine we're saying, I'm going to say Paul, hello Paul, and then I could ask, how old are you? And I could ask, what are your hobbies? And I could ask, you know, what kind of things you like to do? What are your interests? And different things like this. So that's what I would like you to try and do for me as a task. And then when you're finished, all you have to do is, well, you could just take a screenshot of this. You don't need to um, download this as such, right? So, you, I mean, here, this main.py, we don't need to, as I say, download it or anything like that. You can just take a screenshot of your work. So I would like you to ask, in this task, minimum uh, three questions. So if you want, if you imagine how I'm doing this now, I'm going to put on maybe a new line, leave a bit of a space possibly. And if I want to ask the person's age, I would do the age, right? And then put here, how old are you? And collect that information, right? And then I could print a message saying, oh, you are such and such an years old okay something like that you could do okay so if i wanted to do the message for that i could say print i say you are like this and i could then put age you are and then i'm going to put years 
old. Okay, so run this. It's going to ask me what my name is. So name is Paul. How old are you? I'm going to put 163. A thousand and sixty-three, hundred and sixty-three. You are one hundred and sixty-three years old. Okay, so you can see we can do this kind of thing. Now you notice um, the where I'm using these commas to separate. Now this is really important because, as you can see, that this this is a string. It's in quotes, and this is my variable that I'm wanting to put in here. Okay, so I would like to ask you to do four. Uh, questions. So as I said, I've shown you a couple of ones. So we're creating two variables, name and age. And I want you to do just four in total. Ask questions. Could be about hobbies, interests, those kind of things. What did you have for breakfast? Whatever you want. And then take a screenshot. Now to take a screenshot, if you're using Windows, you press that little button on the top right called Imprimir Pantaya. Yeah, it'll be imprim pant, something like that. And it won't do you anything, but what you need to do is then in Google Classroom, create a Google Doc, and then you can paste that image. If you're on a MacBook, like I am, you can do a Command, Shift, and 3 to take a screenshot. So if I do it, you can see it's come up here, and I've got a screenshot of this. Um, and then I can just put that into a Google uh, document and hand that in in classroom. Okay, that's the end of this lesson.